Okay, hello everybody. Um, this is Pat McLeod again. Um, this is a follow-up session from last week's MAPRON webinar. Um, this one is focusing purely on uh, the local administration roles uh, related to MAPRON. Um, it'll be 15 or 20 minutes. Um, it has a set of slides which, which can be copied out later. Um, and basically, I'm just trying to run through the basic functionality so that when you are assigned the role of local administrator, you can, um, you know where to look and can go and find things. Um, so we'll start off basically with uh, talking a little bit about clubs and areas. And the reason for this being sort of the intro to this session is that uh, local administrators operate in orienteering terms, typically within clubs, but within, uh, within MAPRON, um, we've tended to drift more towards a focus of locality and area for uh, the MAPRON folder set up, in other words, where you find events, um, because that not only um, saves people wondering where on earth Saxons or Octavian, Octavian Drovers are, but also allows non-orienteering organisations who might want to get involved with a bit of navigation sport um, to join in and share localities with orienteering clubs. So if I just show you, I mean, those of you who have been anywhere near MAPRON will know the structure on the MAPRON website. When you select the UK, you will see a whole series of different um, areas where you can go to find courses. And as I say, the structure behind this is primarily to work on areas rather than club names. Clearly, in some cases, there are um, club name is the same as the area, but that's what we try to focus on. And so local authorities, uh, local administrators have responsibility for uh, one or more of these, these folders within the overall MAPRON system. Um, so the things we're going to look about, the primary, the most important thing that you will do is basically to, to check events, make sure they're going to work okay, load them up onto the system. Um, in, at, at some point, you may want to delete events, and you will probably at some point have to um, make some corrections to people's results and that sort of thing. You'll also manage the folder structure. Um, and like many of these things, like, for example, your club's root gadget representative, you'll be the interface back to the MAPRON support in, uh, in Australia with Peter, Evan, Peter Effany. So what we'll do is we'll go through the, the, the key thing that you need to be able to do, which is to check events and load them up. And um, you'll, those of you who were on the webinar last week will be familiar with this slide, which is basically trying now to identify the point at which you will be involved. Um, so typically when you're setting up a course, um, either you or the planner will be working on creating the map file, creating the course file, um, probably to start with you, but eventually planners should be able to do this the same, the same in the same way that they do um, Purple Pen courses or OCAD planning or whatever. Where you become critical is making sure at the Google Earth check stage that the files that are produced are going to work in the system and are not going to cause it to crash or to cause problems with the course once you've loaded it up. And then, of course, when you come to load the course up as a proper event, and here I'm talking about real events, not check sites things, which anybody can do. Um, then clearly that's where you become the key player. Um, so what we'll do is we'll run through the things that you need to do when you're doing the, the, the basic um, event check before trying to load it up. And for this, I will reduce this to small size, get rid of the phone, and we'll use a few examples to show you um, the sort of things you need to think about when checking a course. The KMZ file is the background map file. Um, I don't need to go through all of those bullets on the left there. Um, they're all fairly self-explanatory. I will show you a few examples. Um, typically, here is a course from um, Suffolk, and this is a course which, is, which has come out of Open Orienteering Map. It has one tile. That's all there is to it. That's pretty automatic and you don't have to worry about that. That will work in the system. Um, this course here has a set of tiles which have been put out from this product called MAPSI to MAPSI. They're a part of an ordnance survey, 125K map. The MAPSI to MAPSI produces tiles 
with this leaning construct constraint here, construction, which will not work in in uh, map run. Essentially, KMZ files have to have a structure which is consistent with the way OCAD generates um, KMZ files. So if you look at the Ross map here, um, this is the kind of structure you would you would expect to see. The tiles named thus and in this sort of sequence. And that's just outlined on the slide here. Um, one thing it's worth doing if, is this course here, who's, which I can't remember where it's from. I think this may be a Suffolk one as well. Um, this, no, this is actually the Ross file. I think this, this, this course here, this file name is the file name that's come straight out of Open Orienteering Map. Doesn't actually tell me where the course is. So one thing you can do, and you probably should do, I think, is to rename this file to represent the course, much as Sarah has done up here for um, for this Suffolk course. If you rename it here, don't then save the file out with that new name. There's a good chance it won't work if you do that. Um, so the key thing with KMZ files is make sure that they're not too big. Um, try and make sure that they're tiled, although the files that come out of Open Orienteering Map are not tiled, but they're not too big, so that doesn't really matter. Go into Google Earth and make sure that the, the file fits. Um, we go into our Ross map here. Zoom to it. Um, then give the file a quick check. If you tap on the screen and then press reset, it'll go vertical. And then you can just use the button at the, the, the slider at the bottom of the screen here, just fade it out and check that the file fits correctly. Again, if it's come out of Open Orienteering Map, it almost certainly will, um, it, for, across most of it anyway. If it's come out of other sources, you probably need to give it a good check. <coughs> the other thing you need to know at some point when you come to load the file is the, the dots per inch that the file has, has, with which the file has been generated. You can tell that by looking at the number of tiles. There's a little list there which tells you. Um, otherwise, you have to find a way of getting into the, the, the tiles themselves to interrogate them. Uh, it's not particularly straightforward to do, and I'm not going to go through it now in the interest of time. Um, but you probably want to try and make sure that when you generate the file or when your planner generates the file, he or she tells you what the, what the dots per inch is for that, for that file that they've produced. So once you're happy that the KMZ file is right, as I say, the name here doesn't matter. The name of the file um, in your folder system, in your filing system, doesn't matter. When you come on to the next file, which is the course file, in um, the KML file, at this point, the name does matter. There are also a couple of other things you need to look at. Um, so if we look at a couple of KML files, um, here is one where the file name doesn't tell us where the course is. This course is, judging by the symbology, has come out of uh, Open Orienteering Map. Um, the, the controls are in the right order, or rather, the first one is S1, the start. The last one is F1, the finish. Controls in the middle can be in any sequence unless it's a linear course, in which case, clearly, they need to be in course order. The, the course, the, the controls have got no details against them. If you look at the properties of a particular control, it's basically very blank. Do not add stuff in here unless you can really avoid it, uh, if you can possibly avoid it. Um, there's always a chance that by putting special characters into here, you will screw up the load. So there's no need to put any information into the file here. Um, it's not used by MapRun. And it simply causes the risk that things might go wrong. Likewise, the symbology is not used by MapRun. It will create its own standard orienteering circles and things when you when it uh, generates the course. The key thing about the, the KML file is the file name. Um, the file name, as you saw last week, has a structure which needs to be applied if you want to apply certain constraints or, or certain definitions to the way the course is, the course is set up. Um, 
So again, this slide, slight repeat from last week's, um, a fully specified file name has the event name. It may well have some sort of pin protection placed on it, and it will probably describe the kind of course it is. In this case, a 60 minute score course using the N scoring scheme. At the other end of the spectrum, a very simple course is just called course name pxac.kml, which simply says this is a linear course, no other uh, considerations. And on the right of the slide there, there's a list of the kinds of courses you can have. More importantly, go to um, the website, the, the MAPRON website has masses of information on it on things like um, scoring schemes, event types, etc. So you can always find backup information from this on the very good sets of information available on the Map Runners website. Um, so basically you've done the check. If all of those things look good, then you can move on to publishing the course. And the, the next step, and perhaps just before you do that, you need to think about the other considerations that need to go into setting up the course in the first place. Um, there's a fair amount of information that's defined when you load the course and that can't be changed later. Clearly, you need to know the scale and DPI of the, of the, um, of the KMZ file. We already just talked about that. You need to know what kind of event you want to set up, what kind of security requirements are, are required, whether it's going to have a mass start, um, whether you want it to be start anywhere, and so forth. And so here, what you've got is a little box which shows you the, the typical um, considerations you need to take into account when creating the file. And in a moment, when we go on to create a, uh, an event, you'll you'll see that there are lots more that you may want to apply. So, having established all the information you need, then you can move on to publishing the course. And this is where the MapRun console comes in. A little bit of talking here. Um, the MapRun console is this screen here. Um, and I put the link in the, on, on the page there. This is the current MapRun console, um, this one here. Now, if you scan down these events, I'm already logged in here. Um, so I get more events, more menu items than your average person if they're not logged in sees. And you'll find that a lot of these show as not yet implemented. Um, the reason for this is that the earlier generation MapRun console, which is this one here, um, is based on the old root gadget backbone of, of the MapRun system. And Peter decided some time ago that he wanted to replace this and therefore started work on this MapRun console which is the one listed at the top of the slide here. Unfortunately, COVID has taken over, and what he's done over the last few months is to focus his attention on adding functionality to help with the current situation we find ourselves in. So start anywhere, for example, an, an extension of things like check sites, um, a number of functions which are designed to make map run more reusable right now have taken priority over completing this um, map run console. So as a result, back to the slide, some things you do in this console, there are some things that you still have to do by going back to the older console, which is which is linked to here. So when you have these slides, you will find a link to those. You can go back into the older console um, which is this one here. So, oh, I should add also that there is a third version, a new console coming along, but for the time being, I would just put that to one side. Um, the reason for that is that Peter's not particularly happy with some of the way this, this, the underlying technology for this console works. So, for the sort of jobs you have to do, you need to add and delete events in the new MapRun, the current MapRun console here. It also has this uh, GPS track upload function, which unfortunately at the moment is not working. Well, it wasn't this morning when I tried it. 
Um, but the purpose of this is to allow you to take a GPX track um, given you or sent to you by a runner, by a competitor, um, who feels that either the app didn't complete properly on their phone or that they've got problems with it, they want it reviewed. And the idea here is if you didn't get an upload into your results, then with the GPX, a GPX export of the track, you can come into this screen and go through and load up the track. And you'll see that down the bottom here, as I say, I'd, I'd like to run through it, but I can't get it to work at the moment. Um, the way it works is you specify who the person is, you specify the event, in, upload the track, and it will then analyze the track and work out which controls it thinks the runner visited based on whatever threshold you define here. Um, you can then iterate through that until such time as you feel you've got a valid result, and then you can publish that result uh, into the, effectively the system then publishes that result into the overall results for you. So that's a useful function that you can do in the new console. And the other benefit of it is that, get this screen back again. Um, that's better. The other benefit of it is that you can, anybody can do this. This is not simply a, an administrator function. Um, so people can actually do that themselves, although I suspect that to, certainly to start with, it will be you as local administrators who will be expected to do this. The other thing it has here is a purple pen tool. And again, in the interest of time, I'm not going to go through that. But essentially, the purpose of that is to allow you to move all of the controls in a purple pen file by a specified amount. And the reason that's sometimes useful is that if you have changed the scale of your purple pen file, or if you have um, changed the background map, this is particularly relevant, for example, to people who are using open orienteering mapper maps. Um, when you switch the, the coordinate reference system to the one required for Google Earth, you will typically find that the purple pen file will open, but all the controls are misplaced by a specific, by a, a particular amount and by the same amount for each control. And you can use this tool, um, as the description there shows, to um, move the whole lot into the right place. So fairly self-explanatory within the purple pen tool as to how you do that. If, however, you find yourself having to for example, change a specific result for an event or move an event between folders, which is perfectly possible to do, or to go and find the pin for an event because you've forgotten it, then those sort of tasks you need to use the, you need currently to use the older um, map run console for. So in here, I can go and find the pin for an event. The other thing I can do is I can um, edit a result. So if I go into select an event here, um, not particularly friendly screen, another reason for getting rid of it. Um, it basically lists all the courses that have been published in root gadget ID sequence. So I need to come down here to the one I know about, which is my seven ride um, course, which I wrote last week. Um, I can then go into this result here. There's only one result for this ride because I'm the only person who's done it. Um, if I click on this and go edit results, then I can now add in controls that I that I claim I went to, but that didn't register. And if it's a score course, uh, which this isn't, um, if it's a score course, I would here be able to adjust my score. Um, and then I can hit save changes. And then when I've hit save changes um, for all of the areas I might have thought problems people might have had by event, I can then come back in here, hit the event, the refresh the event results, and that will allow me to apply, apply individual changes to people's particular courses. So that's a useful function, but needs to be done currently in the older, older format. So um, let's come back to the current MapRun console, and let's run through briefly the process of well, first of all, what we'll do is we'll delete a course. So I'll, I'll come into here. Let's make this full size. And you'll find when you come into the delete screen that there are two options. Normally, you will use the first option, 
which says root gadget events. Uh, essentially, when a course is loaded up into MapRun, it, there are two parts to it. There's a root gadget part and there's a MapRun part. To get rid of the whole lot, you select this um, root gadget one. If you've had, a, for example, an aborted load of a program, of, a, of an event course, and so you've got half it loaded and half not, then you lose, you lose, you use this option two. Generally speaking, nowadays you'll be using option one. Um, so what we'll do is we'll come in here, select an event, search for my seven seven ride, um, event number four seven one two, and we'll delete it. Delete root gadget event, and that's deleted successfully. Um, so if, for example, you've um, loaded up a course and then decided that you want to change it to start anywhere, but it wasn't start anywhere before, or want to change one of the other settings, the only way to do that is to delete the course and recreate it. So having deleted the course, um, we'll now go back in, recreate it again. And so we'll just call it NGOC for the time being. Um, Slightly involved screen, which you may remember from last time here, where I need to, I'm in the UK, I need to find Gloucestershire here, and then I need to use this other scroll bar, scroll down and find my training folder, which is where I want to put the course, select the KMZ file. Find it. Um, where have I put it? I'm trying to remember where I put it now. Probably in there. There we go. Seven ride KMZ. Um, select the KML file. And then down here, this is key, particularly and this is particularly significant for open orienting mapper users. The open orienting mapper KMZ files actually output from the system as a default 72 dots per inch. And so until recently, I've been changing this to 72 dots per inch, setting the scale accordingly, printing the map, uh, printing the, the, the publishing the event, and finding that the purple pen file is scaled incorrectly. For purple for purple for KMZ files produced by Open Orienteering Map, you need to leave the setting at 150. I've had a quick discussion with Peter about that, and we haven't actually resolved why that's necessarily the case, but just for the time being, that's what you need to do. Set the scale, and then again, we went through this last week for those who were on the on the webinar. You need to look at all the various options and settings that you may wish to set. Um, for example, start at any control. For example, change the punch tolerance, change the ability for a user. So if we could leave this for displaying the track where or displaying the present location, for example. Um, if you leave this as false and locked, they will not be able to see where they are and they won't be able to change it. You can leave it as false as the default, change this to changeable, and that will allow people who wish to to switch on a uh, runner location um, if, for example, they're novice navigators or not confident or whatever. So once you've made all of these settings, then you simply click the add event button um, and you will get a return, which typically will say, because it's an open orienteering map, KMZ file, it's not tiled, but it won't be a problem. And then down here, I've got a link to download the um, purple pen files, um, which I can do for about the seventh time. Um, I should put them in here. And that's all there is to it, really. Now, typically, what I will do is I will go to my phone. Um, I will scroll through to. Um, the Gloucestershire folder. Scroll down to um, training. 
and find the course somewhere in here, seven ride, download it, and make sure that it looks okay. Go to start. Yeah, looks fine. That's what I would expect to see. And then just close out because I'm not going to run it right now. So essentially, that's all I need to do. And once I've checked that it's down on my phone, then everybody else will be able to see it. So that's essentially loading a course up. Uh, we've been through deleting a course, been through most of these other functions. The thing to do when you get your authority as a local authority, as a local administrator, is to go through and have a play with these things and see how they all work. So let's move on. Um, brief bit about map run events. And I'd leave, leave you to read through through all this. There's not really a great deal more to say about it other than that these are just like any other orienteering event, as far as we're concerned. Um, they're different, but you do you do all the normal sort of things that you do for a normal orienteering event other than put out controls. Um, and Basically, at the end of the thing, ideally, which is something you don't normally do with, with normal orienteering events or other orienteering events, is to publish it. Keep it as a permanent course or a virtual course, whatever you care to call it, um, because it's always there. And it's always on the system until you decide to delete it. And it's always on people's phones until they decide to delete it. So it's readily available to everybody. Finally, Resources. There's lots of material on the on the um, map runners website, as I've mentioned. Uh, there's a particularly useful page on um, map run for for organizers. Um, sorry, pressed the wrong one there. Map run for organizers. Yeah, showing all the admin functions. And there's this new forum, which is well worth going to visit and actually contributing to because it needs. It needs involvement for it to become worthwhile. Um, so that's it on, on local administration. Um, hopefully I've covered everything you need to cover. Again, my contact details are on here. If you feel free to get in touch, if I can help, I'll do the best I can, or I'll refer back to Peter or suggest that you do the same. Um, so that's it. Hopefully we'll do some more of these. Uh, the next one probably will be on using OCAD, which is, Pretty straightforward for for map runs, but with a few things to think about when you're looking at uh, planning map run courses, especially using old OCAD courses, but in general terms using the forest. Um, so we'll come back to those some other time. That's all. Thank you.